Okay, here we go. Listen, please. No one's about to. Brand new topic, as always. Uh, keep in mind that what we are discussing is not how to solve any problems. Like, this is not a discussion about here's what you do to solve the homework problems. This is a discussion about ideas that you have not heard of before. It's brand new. Uh, the key thing is to make sure the ideas make sense. If you just sit passively, you're wasting your time. You might as well have not even come. So you've got to actively listen. Uh, first thing, there's a function here. And the function actually has this formula. F of x is equal to 1 third x cubed. Okay, I picked the function because it's just easy to deal with. We could have picked anything. Just this one's easy to work with. So we've got to pick the word for these guys. Uh, no packet. No packet. We're, not, we're not learning how to do a homework problem at this point. We're simply learning some ideas that are crucial for the rest of the year. Uh, 
of f of x. You have to memorize that phrase as well. Uh, someone said, hey, I've lost track of what derivative means. So you've got to know the meaning. The meaning is the instantaneous, I think I showed you this little abbreviation last time, instantaneous rate of change of f of x. And then no one likes to write all these words, so they come up with a symbol. The symbol looks like this, f prime of x. And then because somebody else wanted a different symbol, there's this one as well. D of f of x divided by dx. And not to be outdone, somebody said, hey, since we usually call f of x and y the same thing, you can also say dy or dx. Okay. Everything here in red means exactly the same thing, but you have to recognize all the different ways that it is stated. Questions. Um, so D actually doesn't equal anything. It's just a symbol. So Sarah gets three points for asking this. Everyone look up. Look up. It's really key that she's asked it. When you look here, Sarah, dx, don't ever think of this as D times x because it isn't. The D and the x are actually combined into a single symbol, so they don't separate. It's just dx. Um, same thing here. It's D f of x. Uh, it really means infinitesimal difference. We'll worry about that later. But crucial to make sense that it's not a D and it's not an X, it's a DF. Yeah. So that makes sense? Cool. Anybody else? And then that's DY over DX. Perfect. So again, this isn't D times Y, it's Y. If it were D times Y, the Ds could divide out. But they can't because it's not D and Y separated. It's like once, it's one combined symbol, DY. Anyone else? Perfect. Um, so over here at this point, we want to talk about this idea. So at this point, this function has some tangent slope. I'm going to draw a picture of what that looks like. So I've got the dot. If I go to draw the tangent slope, it looks something like this. Like that. That's a pretty good tangent slope. Wow. <laughs> I'll just sit back and just enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Questions? Okay. So when I say this is f of x, and if I write over here, let's see, the slope of this line, so the slope of the tangent, the slope of tangent, so the slope of tangent at x equal negative 3. We're looking at the slope of this line. Now, it gets tiresome to write out <coughs> the words. The slope of the tangent, uh, technically you should say tangent of f of x at x equal 3. So the symbol is simply f prime at x equal negative 3. So this symbol means the slope of it. So here's the function f. The prime means the slope of f. This means at negative 3. Pause for any questions. Uh, you're going to use this notation for the rest of the year. Like it will not just be this unit, it's the whole year. <coughs> Wait, can you explain that last little bit? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'll just kind of resummarize chat and just jump in if I say something that doesn't make sense. So we have a function, we have a point on the function labeled here negative 3, comma, yeah. negative 9. You're used to this notation to say that, for example, um, f, the value of the function at an x-coordinate of negative 3 is equal to a value of negative 9. Like you're accustomed to this notation. This notation is very similar. It simply says the function f has a tangent line slope, as the little prime means at an x-coordinate of negative 3. So this is representing some slope value. And the value of this slope turns out to be, yeah, I'm going to write a number here. The number, you do not have to worry about where the number is coming from yet. So I'm just going to tell you what the number is. You don't worry about it. Um, we'll figure out in a few weeks where it comes from. 
but it turns out that the slope of this red line is 9. And it is total coincidence that this is 9 and this is negative 9. That's not going to regularly happen. It's just a coincidence. Any questions so far? Chad, did that help? Yeah. Cool. That's good. Perfect. Um, in fact, just to kind of demonstrate what I mean by the slope is 9, you can count it. Uh, on this graph, this distance is 1. So if I kind of start on the red line here and count over 1, out like that, and then I go up, like so. I'm a little bit off because I didn't draw the tangent line perfectly. This is 1. But ideally, this amount here would be exactly 9, although it's a little bit off because I'm not perfect on my drawing. But the slope of that red line is 9. Now's a really good time to just ask about anything that just curiosity or anything. So, how is the tangent line and tangent and trigonometry related? Um, for the purpose of our class, not very much. I'd have to actually ponder why they use that same name. Because nothing's coming to mind of like why they would use the same name. So it just give me a sense to kind of think about it, but not really sure why they use the same name. Okay, so it so goes through why the slope is nine. Oh. Okay, why this is nine, you're just gonna have to be patient. Like you'll learn why this is known to be exactly nine. I counted the slope just to kind of prove to you that yes, my thinking is reasonably accurate. So slope means rise over run. Yeah. Right. So runs run, you know, runs one. Okay. Up. Rises nine. Okay. But then it's a bit magical where that's coming from. You'll learn in a few weeks. So. What else? Awesome. Uh, so over here. Important to know, you know talk. It's important to know that this is a function, it's just a list of xy pairs, but the f prime is a function as well. It also has a list of xy pairs. But I put one column of x for a specific purpose. That's because the x values for the f of x function are exactly the same as they are for the f prime. Because f prime comes from f. Or you can do it the other way around, actually. You can make f come from f prime. They're dependent upon each other. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's a function, list of xy pairs. There's another function, just another list of xy pairs. You know the x's are shared. The key thing is to note that for this pair of numbers, uh, the meaning is really simple. On the graph of f, at this point, the x coordinate is negative 3, the y coordinate is negative 9. So this number really has only one meaning so far in this context. Any questions? Here's the big part. This number has two meanings. You have to remember both. Uh, one meaning is, if I look at the graph of f, 9 represents the tangent slope, the tangent slope of f at an x value of negative 3. That's one meaning for this negative 3 common 9. But because f prime is a function, we can also make a graph of the f prime values, meaning I could take this grid and say, let's see, negative 3, common 9 is about here, and that would represent a point on the f prime graph. So negative 3, common 9 has two meanings. It's an xy coordinate on the f prime graph, but it is also the tangent slope um, on the f graph. Any questions now? Uh, it's really crucial. Like I said, I'm not showing you how to do homework here, but the terms, what they mean, you must understand. If you do not, you will struggle mightily on the next test. Please, buddy. Can you keep it Uh huh. So what I want you to keep straight in your head is, when you look at an xy pair for f, just really one meaning. The xy pair is nothing more than the location of the dot on the that graph. When you look at the f prime function, however, 
the negative 3 comma 9 has two different meanings. Uh, one meaning is on the F graph at x equal negative 3, so here we are at x equal negative 3, the tangent slope is 9. But if we start making a graph of F prime, negative 3 comma 9 becomes a dot on the F prime graph. Good question. What else? So we can keep doing that. For example, we can go to the next point. Let's just go to negative 2. So let's see, negative 2 is right here. So that's about here. Uh, somebody, what's the y coordinate when x is negative 2? Looking for a hand. Who's there? Uh, tiny mistake, let me just help you through it. So plug in negative 2. It's close to negative 3, that's why you're thinking it is, but it's not quite. Is it negative 2? Or negative 2 and a half? Kind of. Like here's negative 2. The reason she said negative 3 is because it's pretty close. This is negative 2, this is negative 4. Uh, plugging it in, what's negative 2 cubed? Negative 8 divided by 3 would be negative 8 thirds. So pretty, 9 thirds would be exactly negative 3. So very close. Questions? Uh, we just plugged it in. So this is the formula for finding every single xy pair in this function. So if we plug in a value of negative 2, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 8 times the 1 third is negative 8 third. Anyone else? Awesome. Again, at this point, we can identify the tangent slope. So we'll do it in a different color. So right here, we draw a good tangent slope. I missed by a little bit. Try again. Come back up. So right there, tangent slope is going to look something like that. Question. So once again, we could say slope of the tangent line, so the slope of f of x is the tangent slope at x equal negative 2 is f prime of negative 2. And we would need to find that slope. Uh, you'll learn how to do this later. It turns out to be 4. But so we don't even know how to do that yet. You did not yet, Kelsey. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry the fact that I can calculate that the slope is 9. I can calculate that the slope is 4. You'll learn how eventually. You just you can't do it yet. So. For now, what's crucial, Kelsey, is that it makes total sense to you that when you're looking at a function, you can go to any point, identify visually what the tangent slope would look like, so it's a rough sketch, and then you would know how to write down what it is. So the tangent slope is f prime of 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Please. For the homework right now, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me, yeah, I think I get your question. You won't be asked to compute this at all. I'm simply putting the numbers on the board so it's easier to talk about. And no, you're not going to be asked to necessarily write all of this, Deborah, like tangent slope of f at this. I just got to make sure you don't forget what the symbol means. That's all. Please, I have a question that might be kind of a topic to think about. Like you're good. The fact that we saw that it's negative 2 and 4 or whatever. What's the point of graphing that? Like, why do we need to find the tan? Like, well, graph the f prime line. Oh, like, why did I graph yeah, this? Yeah, like, why, why is that Genius. relevant? Uh, it's actually <laughs> totally on topic. Um, let me finish writing this one second. So this turned out to be 4. Yeah. Um, the idea is that if you have a graph, so really, we're not going to spend a lot of time graphing f prime. When I show you how to graph it, it just helps you make sense of it. 
in most cases, what's going to happen is you're going to be given a graph of f prime. So, like a magic trick, I happen to have one just waiting right here. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. 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 Look so regularly, it's a cube graph, right? It has the uh, the shape, right? Yeah, that one. Yeah, this one's yeah. this cube right there. And then the f prime would turn into a parabola. It is true that a cubic function, the derivative of a cubic function, is a uh, quadratic okay. a parabola. Now, don't get too excited about that. It does work in this case. There are many other cases, so yeah, we'll investigate many cases. This is a start. Again, look up. Everyone look up. Like, really, don't sit here thinking, what are we solving? We're not solving anything. Like, you got to learn the language. you got to learn what I mean when I say the tangent slope of that. You've got to completely understand how to write that statement symbolically. It's kind of back to what Kelsey, or sorry, what Deborah said. It's not that you have to write this, but you're not learning how to do something. You're learning how to understand, like you're trying to understand the meaning. You see the difference. Yeah, don't, you're, you're just very used to math classes where you simply sit down, the teacher says, this is how we do this, and then you just do it. It doesn't work for calculus. So you've got to find the meaning in it. So very with me. Yeah. I'll take that analogy. Um, yeah, don't worry about where the four came from. In a few weeks, you'll know. I mean, we just can't learn everything. Else. So at this point, key things. Hey, look at me. Key things. You must be comfortable with what this symbol means. Right here. You don't have to know where the four came from. You do need to know where the negative two came from. We simply picked, that was a random pick. We simply picked a point, and we said, hey, at that point, there is some tangent slope of f. If I want to write the tangent slope of f, I use this symbol. The symbol means the tangent slope of f at an x coordinate of negative two has a value of four. Then back to Derek's question, we can plot that on a different function. So the computer drew this for me. Okay, it knows the trick as well that you will learn. And look, at negative 2, what is the y coordinate? Ah, I'm mess up my magic trick. Um, so that point has an x coordinate of negative 2, <coughs> excuse me, and a y coordinate of 4. Any questions? Now, Derek's comment is this, and we're getting there, Derek. We're starting right there. Okay. Hey, this negative 2 comma 4 has two meanings. You have to keep track of both of them. Um, please. Why, why would it? Because there's a negative 2. And then, um, wait, wait, wait. How is that 4 again? How do you? Right here. Oh, wait, wait. That's just that one graph. Never mind. You good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Mr. Sunwall. Everything else good? change the rules, you get um, you, you get language credit for passing calculus. Like one of the GE requirements, 
the same. I can't remember hearing that. Yeah. One of the GE requirements is called languages of learning. And I don't know what the options are currently. I'd have to look it up. When I went to BYU, you had to choose. You could either take, I believe it was like three semesters of a language, three semesters, or you could pass one semester of college calculus. And this, they, that, the requirements for the, like this or this. So what we're learning, so really, what you're learning today is simply the language, like the terms, the symbols, how to write it, and then we'll progress to how to solve problems. Sorry, can you explain what the two meanings are? Uh-huh. So back to here. Dual meaning, negative two comma four. If you're paying attention to the graph of f prime, this is nothing more than an x, y coordinate on the graph of f prime negative 2 comma 4. However, the 4 also represents the tangent slope on this other graph, the tangent slope of the f graph. That's the dual meaning you have to keep track of. Any questions? Okay, now Derek, the reason you have a graph of f prime is because now if you want, you can simply pay attention to f prime and you can figure out the tangent slope at any point on f. So for example, I just need a volunteer. Jackson. So pick any reasonable x coordinate. Three. Three. So right here. Oh, interesting. Check out those. So they appear to share the same point. So on the f prime graph, that's um, three comma looks to be about nine. So Jackson. That three comma nine has two meanings. Just state back what the two meanings are. I said it just a minute ago. Uh, it's the uh, the prime of the x value three, and then the regular three is nine. Kind of, kind of. Two points. Somebody help me. What does it mean, sir? The um, point on the f prime graph, and then the tangent of three for the regular one. Perfect. Perfect. So 3 comma 9 means at an x coordinate of 3 on both graphs. 9 is one thing, it's the y coordinate on the f prime graph. But it is also the value of the tangent slope on the f graph or the blue graph. So if I draw a tangent line on f, that's I started to draw this high on the board, but something with uh, that was nasty. Um, Kind of like that. The slope of the green line is also 9. That's on the blue. So the slope of f of x, the tangent slope, the tangent slope of f of x at um, x equal 3 is 9. So f prime of 3 is equal to 9. Pause for question. So, when we like have the f prime, is it always positive? Oh, in this case it is, but it's not always. So how do you know if it's not? Uh, really good question. Three tickets. So don't worry about numbers for a second. Uh, I need a volunteer. See the some points. Let's go back here to Braden. So Braden, right here, if I have to draw a tangent slope, is that does that tangent slope have a positive or negative value? Positive. If I move to here, tangent of a positive or negative value? It's the positive. positive. How about here? Positive. How about here? Positive. Good. All of those slopes are slanting upward, as we say, hence the slope is considered to be positive. Uh, there's a little connection that you need to memorize. It's right here on the board. He noticed that because, and Jacob saw the same thing, because this f function, is always increasing. <coughs> you know that every single, let me get this on the main board here. So here's the little thing you've got to memorize. You have f and f prime. If f is an increasing function, every single f prime value will be positive. Similarly, if f is a decreasing function, every f prime value will be negative. Question? 
your voice is sitting. Uh, f just means f of x. <coughs> yeah, f and f of x mean the same thing. So. Oh, we'll get there in a second. Thank you. Is everybody good to hear? Are you comfortable? Yeah. Um, okay, you learned about concavity last year on k -bop. So c is just my quick abbreviation for on k -bop. Notice the graph of f. Is the graph of f concave up, concave down, both? Both. Originally it is what? Concave down, concave up. Okay, concave up, let's look at the tangent lines for a minute. Need a volunteer? Here we go, Landon. So this slope was what, Landon? Positive. Positive what value? Nine. As we moved along this concave down curve, the next slope was what? Four. Four. So did the slope values, did they increase or decrease? They decreased. They decreased. Um, the curve here, the F curve, is concave down or concave up? Concave down. Concave down. If the curve is concave down, you will always find, without fail, that the values of the tangent slopes will go down. They'll decrease, just like you saw. Look here, Landon. Here, F is concave up. This slope would be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. This next slope would be more or less positive? More. More. The graph is concave up, hence the slope values are increasing. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Perfect. Please, sir. So for the n prime of are we still dealing with slope? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what should we say a little bit more? Sir? So like, um, for the i the first two on the left side, um, and then the positive and the negative, is that just the points on the graph or the slope? Oh, it's both. It's both. So let me just say it back. So here in this example, I have an f function that is increasing. So I know two things. I know if I follow this f function and pay attention to the tangent slopes, so we said this tangent slope was what again? Nine. Nine. This slope was four. four. We haven't done this one, but this tangent slope would be what, Sarah? Zero. Zero. Then we get back to maybe a tangent slope of four again. And then a tangent slope of nine. So we're saying that if you follow F, every tangent slope that you look at will have a positive value. But if you were looking at the F prime graph, now you're paying attention to the y coordinates. Because the symbol f prime means two things. It means the tangent slope that you see on the f graph, but it also means the y coordinate that you see on the f prime graph. And notice that every one of these f prime values, every f y, every y coordinate on the f prime graph is also positive. Is that what you mean? Good. What else? This is very good. Please. Um, so the point three nine, it's a point. Is it also the point on the f prime graph plus the point you call it the f of x? Um, is that right? Because yes. Perfect. Perfect. So this represents an x y coordinate on the f prime graph, yeah, as well as a tangent slope value on the f graph. It's perfect. At that location. So we always have to have the x tells us where we are looking, the y tells us the value. Great. Great. So. Is 9 the value for the f of x on the table? For this one here? Yeah. Yeah, that was pure coincidence. Okay. Yeah, that won't regularly happen, but in this case it didn't. Okay. So just coincidence. Okay. What else? Please. And how did you get the f prime to 9? Oh, once again, in a few weeks you'll learn where this is coming from. Oh, but for now you don't know. It just makes it hard to talk about the meaning of all this stuff if I don't put some numbers on there. Oh, okay. If I do the old-fashioned math book thing and put letters, it's a lot harder to talk about. <laughs> okay. With numbers, everyone feels a little more comfortable. And just for now, just take it on faith that those really are the values. So, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Um, the homework tonight is going to go pretty fast if this makes sense. Yeah. Um, we'll give a few examples of how we're going to use this to answer some homework questions. So grab the uh, green packet. So grab the green packet. <laughs> you 
tasted so well. Okay, so green packet. Look at the very first problem. I will text out the exact problem. Look at the green. Look at the green. Everyone look out. Everyone look out. Okay, when I transferred the green packet to the board, it lost the y axis, so I'll draw that back here. Okay. It says, which of the following graphs could represent the slope at every point of the function graph here? So you can write on your paper if you'd like. This is f of x. And one of these below is the appropriate f prime for this f. And we're trying to find how it matches. So this is our f graph. We're trying to find the appropriate matching f prime. Like a minute ago, we kind of did it point by point. We looked at f, and we found a tangent slope, and we plotted a point. Found a tangent slope, plotted a point. For these matching exercises, I really want to show you a faster way, because it's good enough. Look at f, we'll have somebody raise their hand and tell me, and find the x-coordinate where the value of the tangent slope is zero. That's the fastest way to do this. So somebody raise your hand and tell me, all who know x, we'll pay everybody, where, what x-coordinate on f has a tangent slope that is zero? Zero means the slope looks like this. So what value of x, we'll pay everyone who raises their hand, so what value of x on the graph of f has a tangent slope of so Erica? So Erica's looking, I think you said it back. Is that right? Good. So Erica's looking at this point. She knows that that point is at x equals 0, y equal negative 1. And she also notes that at that point, the tangent slope has a value of 0. So the tangent slope. How about at x equals 0 is 0 itself? Uh, three tickets if you were to have said what Erica said. Question. Okay, someone else just want, oh please. Oh, here. Someone raise your hand and tell me, this is an easy question, I'm not trying to fool you, just want you to say it. How do you write this statement symbolically? Like what is the symbolic way to write this? Perfect. The slope of f, that's what the prime means, 3 for lexi, at x equals 0 <coughs> has a value of 0. So we're not okay with that. Okay, so now all we do is we transfer this information to one of these graphs. So somebody explain to the class, what does this mean, this whole thing here, mean on one of these graphs? Here we go. Perfect. So I look here and say this isn't going to work because this graph is implying that, see that's at 0 comma 1, that would mean that at x equals 0 on this graph, the tangent slope is 1, which it isn't. These are the possibilities. Okay, that's a good place to stop and ask if that did not make sense. Okay. So I'll ask you the questions, then you'll make sense of it, I promise. So the f graph at x equals 0 has what slope? Perfect. That means when we're looking at the f prime graph, the y coordinate on f prime must be 0 at the same x. Oh, okay. Because this point here, what's the x coordinate right there, Jeff? I, um, Sorry, I got it. Zero, zero. So that has an x coordinate of 0 and a y coordinate of zero. 0. The x simply tells you where to look. So if you look back at f, at x equals 0, this 0 means you should find a tangent slope that is equal to 0. Okay. Did that make sense? Yeah. So do you see why these three are possibilities, this one is not? Uh, perfect. Okay. Three tickets. Anyone else? Um, next thing. The easiest way to proceed now, uh, find the 0 slopes first. That's the best first step. It's a pattern, huh? Um, it's just that time of day. <laughs> Uh, look up, look up, look up, come back, Heidi. It's all good. Um, there you go, me off track. Uh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Next place to look is here. 
this table. <laughs> Just pick a characteristic of app, and you try to find the corresponding characteristic of app prime. The easiest thing to do is pick the most characteristic one. So as you look at app, which one of these four is kind of easiest to describe for app? Concave up. So if f is concave up, what do you expect the y coordinates of the f prime graph to do? Increase. Increase. So let's check. What are the y coordinates of this f prime graph doing? Increasing. Decreasing. How about this one? Increasing, Increasing but then Decreasing. decreasing. That's why this is the correct answer. Yeah. Time for fault, please. There. Yeah, so was it like the, at the one thing you were on the board, the whiteboard, that thing? Wouldn't that really just help you because you know that that's coming up and so it's you know, like that basically also tells you if the answer is correct? Uh, listen to Deborah, that was perfect. Three tickets. Mm -hmm. yeah. She noticed that, that in this case, in this case, Knowing that F is concave up would have been enough of a clue. You really would not have to have found anything else. I showed you the zero because in general, problems are a little more complex than that usually is quite helpful. But no, it's perfect there. In this case, this is concave up. And one of the four graphs that is always increasing is this one. It's perfect. What else? Okay, I'll text out the homework. Oh, please come. Okay, so one more time. The key link is that you've got to remember that when you look at a graph, the xy coordinates have meaning. Now, in F, the xy coordinate really doesn't mean anything other than this is the location of x equal to 0, this is the location of y equal to negative 1. However, in the F prime graphs, this one's F prime, this point has two meanings. It is definitely simply 0 comma 0 on this graph. But it also means look back to f. Pay attention to x equals 0. So here we are. And this value being 0 means that this tangent slope will be 0. So that's why we know this is a possible match. But so are these. Because they have that same 0, 0 point. Does that make sense? Oh, but the 0, negative 1 has totally different meaning. This is the graph of f. The x coordinate is 0, the y coordinate is negative 1. That's just, that's just the f graph. Well, what we're trying to figure out is how does f prime correspond to f? How does f prime correspond to f? And what, we're, what we've learned is that this point on f prime at 0 comma 0 means that when you look back at the f graph itself, the tangent slope will be 0. Please. So the zero is at two different places, I'll let you play with it because time's up. The zero is out at two different places. What you're going to have to do 